Welcome to the Community Living Education Project's Bite Size Lunch Series, Making Assistive Technology Work for You. These sessions are being offered in partnership with the Richard West Assistive Technology Advocacy Center at Disability Rights New Jersey. The Community Living Education Project, also known as CLEP, is a program through the Rutgers School of Public Health. CLEP is committed to providing individual guidance, mentoring, and education regarding community living resources for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities living in the state of New Jersey. The CLEP team, many of us who are family members ourselves, can serve as a bridge for families whose loved ones may be seeking residential options outside of the family's home. Today's webinar, Assistive Technology for Executive Functioning, is being presented by Mike Murata and Naomi Leibowitz. Before we get started, let's quickly go over how you can participate in today's learning series. To interact with the hosts and presenters, please use a Q&A option on your screen. For consideration to all of our attendees, we encourage you to keep your questions as general as possible. To interact with the other attendees or to provide a suggestion or resource during today's session, please use the chat feature found on your Zoom screen. At this time, I would like to welcome today's presenters, Mike and Naomi. Welcome. Thanks, Melanie. Hey, everybody. Good to be back with you. I, uh, this is our third session, and I'm getting really nicely into the flow of this. This is fun to connect with people once a month. Uh, today's discussion, as Melanie said, was uh, going to be about, well, is going to be about, not was, but is, uh, assistive technology for executive function. So, such an interesting topic. I, I think out of the topics that we talk about, uh, this is such an interesting one, just in general, about assistive technology, uh, because it's that idea uh, uh, of an area of support that all of us need, regardless of ability, regardless of situation, regardless of the environment we find ourselves in. We all do these things all day long. We provide ourselves with supports, both tech supports and low tech solutions uh, to help us manage. I'm just gonna say manage. I was gonna say manage ourselves, but I'm just gonna say manage, just manage everything. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit today. And as we do with, with these uh, bite-sized sessions, uh, a little discussion first from us to you, and then we'll open it up. Questions, uh, you can put things in the chat. We can have conversations. Uh, if you want to turn your mic on, I bet we have a way that Melanie can turn your mic on if we want that, if someone needs to um, use the microphone to share theirs. Right, Melanie? Yeah, sure. If someone just types in the chat section or the Q&A that they would like to have offer a live comment, we'll make sure to uh, make that work. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I didn't wanna offer you everybody something that we weren't gonna give you, but I thought we could. Uh, so we'll do it that way. We'll see what happens. And you know, these are, our, our plan usually is to be about 45 minutes-ish. I love this idea of an ish with this. I, I know that the slides that we've pulled together, Naomi and I, um, are very broad and just kind of introductory. And then we thought we would go into some deeper conversation. Uh, so maybe about 15 minutes from us, 20 minutes from us, and then we'll flip over to everybody else. So that's kind of how these uh, these uh, webinars roll. If you would like the slides, boy, now that I sold them as not having a whole lot in them, but they are good. They're, they're really good. There's some nice resources there. Uh, you can scan the code that's on the screen. You can click the link that Naomi just dropped into the chat box. Uh, you will so soon learn Naomi is the whiz of the chat box. It's like I just say something and it magically shows up there, which is awesome. So thank you to Naomi. Uh, but we'll keep this going. It's good to see everybody using the, the chat box already. So the slides are there. You'll be able to see them and, sh and click into some of the resources that are there as well. As we mentioned, you're welcome to join in any way you would like. Uh, you can join in the chat, you can join in the question and answer box, you can request to have your mic turned on. We are game for just about anything. And I say just about to keep everybody's expectations tempered there. Let's not completely go off, but let's have a great conversation about this. So there we are, as Melanie said, we are from the Richard West Assistive Technology Advocacy Center. We're at Disability Rights New Jersey. Uh, myself and Naomi, I'm the director. Naomi is our AT specialist. Uh, there's all our socials that you can follow us on. We share tons of information about assistive technology. Uh, you can email us, feel free. We'd love to chat with you about anything and everything related to technology. Um, we do have a website which houses 
I'm going to say it, tons of information. Uh, AT4NJ.org. You can go there and learn about uh, webinars that we have coming up, conferences, other resource links for services around New Jersey. We, we are at the ATAC uh, federally funded to be the resource for New Jersey related to assistive technology. Uh, so we have a couple core services that we do. Uh, we provide device demonstrations. So if you think you need technology, but you're not quite sure what you need, technology changes and we can't know everything about it, you can reach out and myself or Naomi can do an assistive tech demo for you. We can do that in person. We can do that virtually, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, and that's designed to identify your need and then show you some examples of technology that might work for you to help you solve that issue that you're having, whatever it might be. Uh, we also have a loan program uh, where if you know a piece of technology that you think might work for you, you can borrow it from our lending center for three weeks at a time to try it no cost to you. We will ship the device to you. We will give you the information to ship it back to us for free, for free on your end. You, you have no cost for that. But it's a really nice opportunity to get a chance to try something. And, and the way I always like to announce this to people is play with things. Like, it looks cool. It seems like it might work. I think this is going to help me, but I don't want to spend the money on things. Some things are expensive, others not so much. But still, you don't want to waste money on things that are not right for you. Uh, so with that, you can borrow equipment, try it for a couple of weeks, see if it's going to work, um, and then help you make a decision as to whether that's going to be the right path for you with tech. And then finally, we have device reuse. Uh, we partner with Goodwill Home Medical, um, which is down in Camden County, uh, and they collect equipment from the community, refurbish it, fix it clean it, sterilize it, do all that, and then they put it back out into the community for a small fee. Uh, so you can pick up some equipment you might need for a very um, low cost for you. A couple more things, and then we'll jump into our topic. And we were just telling Melanie before we started, we are very excited because uh, we have partnered with uh, the New Jersey Council on Development of Disabilities to provide funding for individuals in the community who are looking for technology tools. Uh, so as long as you're looking for a tool that helps in one of these three areas, advocacy, engagement, health and wellness, and then education and socialization, uh, there is money available. It's not an endless stream of money, but there is money available uh, where uh, we can work with you to help you um, figure out what you might need and then provide funding for a tablet uh, or a computer. Uh, and so that is a really exciting program. We are just announcing it today in this webinar. All the information is on our website. Um, as we go through, I, I'm seeing a, a thing in the chat, sorry, um, for students who are visually impaired, should they request a laptop? So the question was for a student who's visually impaired, should they request a laptop with JAWS from CBVI or ATAC? This money is earmarked for individuals that are served by DDD. So if the individual is um, DDD eligible and signed up, then they can do that. Um, the program does not cover, Ketty, um, to answer your question, that the, the, um, inform the program does not cover the purchase of software or any other tools you might need. It is strictly that hardware purchase is to help someone with the purchase of a tablet or a computer. Um, so in the comment that you mentioned in your chat, Ketty, I would say you would probably still go to CBVI for that. So hopefully that helps. Um, you can reach out to us. You can see it, scan the link on the page, uh, scan the QR code. You can go to the link, whatever works for you. Um, there is a application form that gets filled out. And uh, one of us, myself or Naomi, will reach back out to you to have a conversation about how we can help you move through that. So that is really exciting. Um, this program does go only from now until the end of our fiscal year, which is at the end of September. Um, so there's a small window for money. And there's, like I said, not an endless stream of money, but there is a, a sizable um, pot of money we can pull from for this. So please share this with individuals um, who might be eligible. Yeah, Naomi points out the deadline is September 15th. That gives us a chance to process everything. Excellent. All right, so we'll have that information up. You guys can check that out. Um, we also have a couple more um, workshops that are coming and, and another code to scan. Sorry if you're using your phone, you're now opening multiple pages, but we want to let you know 
um, that we have our statewide conference is coming up at the end of September. We're finalizing that date now, so we should be able to announce that soon. Uh, and then we're also providing a two-day uh, training class on POD, which is the Pragmatic Organization of Dynamic Display for AAC users. That scan will get you to our website, which has information about that and a form that you can go to um, to be on the list to get information when those dates are officially announced. All right, finally, and then we'll move on to our topic. I know this is always just a lot in the beginning. Uh, if you're enjoying this, please sign up for the other ones. Uh, these are our monthly events that are coming up. Uh, so we'll go once a month all the way through the end of the year. Uh, you see some of the topics there. Uh, the link that you use to sign up for this webinar, I'm pretty sure signs you up for the other ones too. So you can um, look for those as well. Our next one is in August. And we'll talk about creating accessible materials um, as we get ready for the school year to kick off. We'll have that conversation. So there's some of our topics coming up. All right, let's jump into executive function. We will give you an official definition of executive function, um, but this is a great one um, to make it very practical for us. So what is executive function? It's, it's like the orchestra. It, it's like, think of an orchestra, the conductor guiding the orchestra together to create this beautiful music, right? So it's these, these separate pieces somehow brought together to accomplish a task. Um, executive function impacts almost everything we do throughout the day. Uh, and so when we think about this and how we can use technology to meet our needs for this, here's the official definition that we use quite a bit, a set of mental processes that helps connect past experience to present action. And so making that connection. Um, but here on the right side of this slide is the piece that gives us that sense of how this area of executive function impacts everything. So when you think about executive function, we use that to perform activities such as planning, organizing, strategizing, paying attention to and remembering details, managing time and space. When you talk about an area that touches virtually everything we do throughout the day, this is the area. Now, that could be very scary to think about because this impacts everything, but really a lot of this is a are the strategies that we use all day long to perform our tasks. Look at all of us that are here now. All of us here had some strategy to get here at noon. Whatever your strategy was, maybe you put it in your calendar, maybe you wrote it on a post-it note and stuck it to your computer. Uh, you could do any number of things that would remind you. Maybe you told your Alexa to, to remind you at 12 o'clock for the webinar, whatever it might be. We all had a strategy that got us there. One strategy is not better than another. One tool is not better than another. It's just the way that we figured out what works best for us. And what's interesting about technology in this area, when we think about assistive technology supports, and we'll show you some examples. And then as we go through, I'm sure people will throw in their um, strategies and tools they use as well. When we think about um, the types of tools we can use for executive function support, this is really quite a tricky area to help people with. Because you think about this idea, the system I use works for me. The system Naomi uses works for her. My system might not work for Naomi. I'm pretty sure it won't. Um, I, I don't know that I would wish my system on anyone the way I manage it, it, but it works for me. And so I think the trick here is when we start to look at tools and supports, for individuals, sometimes we find in this area of executive function, it becomes very hit or miss. Uh, we try things, it doesn't work. We refocus and try something else. Uh, we see if that works. Uh, and so it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, a lot of times what we find when we're talking to individuals about supports, we give scenarios like, hey, what do you think about this as a tool to use? Do you use your calendar in your phone? How do you use your calendar? 
Um, do you use post-it notes? I'm laughing because I have post-it notes all over my desk right now. Um, but this idea of what are the systems that you put together that work for you? And some will work for others, some might not, but we might be able to modify it as we go forward. Um, and so as we think about the things we use, it's a perfect example. And if you were here for our built-in accessibility session, um, that's how we started that one with start what you start where you are and use what you have. What do you have that meets your needs? What can you do with the things you already have in that moment in time where you are? And then we grow from there. And so what I will put up on the screen, and some of these icons might be a little older, but I think you're going to get the, the idea of this. These are, if you have an iPhone, these are the apps that come with your phone. There's a whole array of them over here, from the calendar to the contacts to notes to the camera to your books and the task list, all of these different apps that come with your device. Uh, how do you use these to help you in this area of executive function? Think about that second part of the definition, uh, planning, organizing, strategizing, paying attention to and remembering details, managing time and space. Okay, those are the areas that we're talking about with executive function. What do you use? out of these apps and how do you use it? Share it in the chat and we'll and we'll talk about some of these. I'm almost afraid to say any of mine because I don't want to steal someone's thunder as they they're all excited to share their ideas. So I'll give you 15 seconds to add those on your own and then I'll start jumping in. Don't mind the dog. Okay, here we go. Here's some of them. So the maps, travel time and guides of places I've been, favorites for quick directions. Awesome, Teresa. Awesome. Very good. The timers. Tracy, right? The timers. I mean, it's it's not just the clock app. It's those timers that are in it. Um, whether you set alarms, use it for timers, any of those things that you can use to help organize yourself. Naomi throws out calendar, of course. How do you use the calendar? the calendar slash notifications that come from it, using those and thinking about how that helps elevate a tool that without some of those additional features, the calendar is pretty static in a sense. But if you start adding other features into it, like using notifications and, and doing those kinds of things, suddenly you, you've made a tool much more effective for you. Maps to determine how long it will take to get somewhere, um, yeah, and to know when you should leave to get somewhere. The tasks app and giving yourself notes, Jen says, the notes, um, the notes app to keep track of the grocery list, the schedule and the reminders, always using the compass for directions. Awesome. This idea of using the supports you have. So funny. Anna Maria, I started using the compass on my Apple Watch for that reason, it just to kind of get a sense of which direction I'm supposed to be going. Cheryl says, I put my to-do list on my calendar and delete when I'm done. Cheryl, you win the day. That is how I do things also. So maybe my system is not as strange as I think it is. Cheryl and I are exactly the same. That's exactly how I do it. Instead of using a different app, I simply plop these things into my calendar. Yes, plop is the technical word. I just plop them in there. And then as I do them, I delete them. And it's incredibly satisfying. It's great. Nicolette uses the reminders. Perfect. Notes in Safari, the settings, the app store. Heather says the calendar, the notes and the reminders. Then using the camera, taking pictures of slides to remember things. How many of us could go back through our photo gallery right now and find pictures of where our car might be parked, the entrance to a building, the Wi-Fi code. Um, when I travel, I take a picture of the front of my room so I remember the room number in case I lose my key. All of these things, right? The camera. And then you go through and clean them out every once in a while. The contact list. Um, awesome. 
talk to Alexa to add things to a grocery list. These are awesome, right? These, look at this list we have. I still have 20 messages I haven't looked at yet. That is the perfect example of using what you have. I didn't ask any of you what extra apps you have on your device right now. These are the things that are already there. And so when we start in this area, our first step always is, how are you using the things you have? How could those be used better to support you? And start having some of these conversations with people. Let me see if I can see any different ones. Location-based reminders, camera, maps. Yeah, reminders, awesome. These are great. All of those are perfect examples of ways we can use things. Now, could we go buy a calendar app? Sure, we could. There's probably hundreds of them, if not thousands. You could buy an app. But why not start with the calendar you have and use it until you can't use it anymore? And what I mean by that is you think about the tools we have. And the minute you open up an app on your phone or your tablet or even on your computer, um, the minute you open up an app and say, oh, I love this app, I wish it did, and then you say something else, what you're saying is that app no longer meets your need. You need some kind of additional feature in order to be successful with that tool. And that's the time we go looking for something. You know, we use the calendar as an example. The calendar, great tool. We've already talked about it. It's awesome. You can add different things in there. You can put to-do lists in there, assignment, um, assignments, um, meetings, all of this stuff can be put in there. But you think about a calendar, a calendar is still text-based. If I struggle with text, perhaps visually struggle with it, or uh, reading is difficult for me, to have a lot of text in a calendar might not be a solution for me. But what about another calendar or another tool that allows me to put audio in there or video clips and things like that so that I suddenly have a little bit of multimedia support for the assignments I need to do? Um, so one of the, one of the uh, apps I love for that is called Visual Schedule Planner. And wait a second, I can probably show it to you. Wait, I'm going to flip to another slide deck. Don't get thrown off by this but I want to show you the picture. There you go. I had this one open too, just in case. Because um, I wanted to, as things came up, I wanted to remind myself. We talk about calendars. We all know a, a standard calendar, right? So if we think about our standard calendar, it looks like that. Well, that's mine, actually. That's, and that's an example of color coding and putting things in in lists and all of these reminders um, that Cheryl and I do in our calendars. Um, but if you're not great with text, that picture on the bottom of my phone is a scary thing for you. But what about some of these? The picture on the top left is the visual schedule planner. And you'll notice right away, it's chunked into three pieces, morning, afternoon, evening. Each of the events in there has its own section and there's picture support, there's text, and then you'll notice on those in those columns, look at some of those other icons that are there. On the morning part, it says get dressed. And there's a picture of a person getting dressed, but then there's also a clipboard with a check mark on it. You could click that checkboard and it will give you the steps of that process. So if I don't remember, so the second activity in the morning is feed the dog. If I don't remember where the food is and how to put it in the bowl and all this other great stuff. I can click on that checklist and go through all of the steps. The other thing you can do in that is if I need to remember what to do, and perhaps I need to see it before I do it, look in the middle there in the afternoon part. Um, the second item there says bus to home. And then there's a little picture of a film reel there. If I click that film reel, it plays me a video of where I would go to get the bus home. So before three o'clock, perhaps I get a little anxious, like, oh, where's the bus? How do I get there? What do I have to do? I can watch that little video clip to show me how I would get to the bus. And suddenly that anxiety reduces a little because I've gotten that additional support. 
that's a powerful feature that you can't do in a regular calendar, but you can do in that calendar. So when we start looking at some of these different um, strategies and tools to use, that becomes really powerful. The piece on the right is a reminder app um, called Ada, A-I-D-A. It's like most reminder apps uh, where you can set a time and, a, and a, a day, all of that stuff. So it will give you the reminder. But one of the thing, couple things that are different there, first, your reminders can have pictures attached to them, either icons that are in the, in the app or your own pictures you can drop in there. So your reminder also has a picture flash up with it. And then the one other thing you can do is you can record audio and attach them to your reminders. So if I can't read it, I can click that button and it will play audio. Uh, and so really interesting way to kind of build on the um, support that's given in a standard reminder app. And Priscilla asked, is that in the Apple store? Yes, it is called Ada Reminder. I'll put it in the chat so you can see it. Oh, wait a second. I probably shouldn't just randomly click on my screen. Sorry about that. There you go. And the other one was called the Visual Schedule Planner. Um, that Visual Schedule Planner, the one on the top left, is a bit more expensive. That's about $15, give or take, because um, I'm not totally sure of how much it costs, but it's around there. The Reminder app on the bottom, I think, is $2. Might be a dollar, but I think it's $2. Um, and again, that's why I say you think about these strategies of using the tools we have already until you can't. Now, in the bigger scheme of things, buying an app for a dollar that we don't end up using, not a huge deal, probably. Buy 10 of those apps, and suddenly it's a little bigger deal. Um, and so those become tricky. So, Diane, I see you saying you don't have Apple. Um, so you're in an Android situation. I believe the Ada Reminder app is also an Android app. Diane, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, the Visual Schedule Planner app, unfortunately, Diane, is just on the Apple products at this point. So those become part of our conversations of what is it I need? Do I need to explore perhaps looking at a different platform? Because while we're seeing a lot of tools that cross over platforms, it's available for Apple, it's available for Android, um, there are still some tools that are unique and only live on one platform. And those become those moments where we have to have a conversation about, is that something that's worth changing the technology I use? Or can I find similar apps that do certain features, but maybe not as um, embedded all in the same product? Um, and so, you know, a lot of times we look at, you know, if there's one app like that visual schedule planner does all of those things, calendar, videos, checklist. If that doesn't exist in an Android, can I find an Android app that does the checklists and the video reminders? And can I somehow navigate using one or two separate apps to do that? Maybe I can, maybe I can't. That's part of the conversation um, that we have when we look at these tools and their um, ability to be flexible enough to support us. I think, I think that's a really important thing. Um, we don't change the way we are. This is who I am and this is what I need. Now I need to find tools that are flexible enough to support me, not the other way around. Like, oh, I have this thing and I'm gonna change the way I do things in order to use it. Um, not always the greatest way to do things. Um, it, it, I always feel it's a lot better to find those tools that are flexible enough that they can support me. We jump from the things that are built in to our devices to this screen, which literally is an explosion of tech right now. Um, it is a little of everything. Um, and it's about strategies and tools you can use. And some of them are as low tech as a pad of post-it notes, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, interesting in that, and maybe you had the same experiences, um, prior to the pandemic, um, I would have been all digital for things. And I would, you would have asked me how I manage tasks and, and calendars and to-do lists. 
It was all digital. In fact, it was all in Google Keep, which is listed there on the screen, which is a tool that works on any device, any platform, and helps you organize yourself. Um, but what I found was as the pandemic um, rolled on, I rarely left my desk. And so I went back to my old standby of post-it notes everywhere. And here they are. I mean, I could pick up roughly 25 notes right now off my desk. Uh, but what's interesting is now that we're shifting back again um, to this ability to go out and about, which is awesome, um, I have to change that again um, and find a way to bring that back to um, some kind of digital tool that follows with me. And so when we start thinking about tools, what is it you're looking for? Always start with what is it you need? And then what are the tools out there that can support you? The app and the checklist. Oh, if, you, if you're asking, Kathleen asks, what is the name of the app shown on the slide with the checklist, which is this um, that says morning school routine? Um, this is an app. It, it's a visual schedule app. The one I showed you on the previous slide, Sherry, is absolutely correct. This is called Visual Schedule Planner. So this does the calendar with the checklist. If you're looking at this one on the slide right now, which has got the brown kind of wood panel background, um, that is called the First Then app, which is the same company, Good Karma. Um, and in fact, if you were to use the Visual Schedule Planner, here I am, sorry, I'm flipping back and forth, but over here on the top left, the Visual Schedule Planner, when you click on the Checklist app, it is actually the First Then app. I'm going to pause because I know my son's going to come in and the dog's going to bark. Oh, he Bark. barely barked. He barely barked. Um, I was trying to plan that out. I saw him coming up the lawn. So that first then app allows you to put in steps of a task, pictures, text, audio. So you can also embed audio there so people can listen to it. And then as, as you all pointed out as a checklist, when that item is done, I can click the box and check it off as finished as I keep moving through things. So suddenly my steps um, of my process, um, I know where I am in that morning school routine. I can look at it quickly. I get a visual of things that are done, things that still need to be done. So thinking about that, um, there's a timer app there. Again, is it different from the timer that we use in our uh, clock app? No, yes, but no. It's different in that it's visually presenting information a different way. So do I need that visual display to support me as I go forward? Or can I use a straightforward to count, countdown? Um, so really those become part of the, um, the aspects, the features of a tool that we find we need in order to be helpful. You see there's notes at the top, which is just a strategy of, of using basically electronic post-it notes. Um, on the top right, in the center, of, I mean, in the, in the top center of the screen, um, we have a couple different ways that you could manage reminders and note takers and things like that. One is a digital recorder. You have a digital recorder on your phone. You could do that. I mean, if you just want to do voice recordings, um, you could do that as well. Uh, and so thinking about as we go forward, Laura, so that, that's a great point. So on the top left is post-it notes. Um, in the, on the top in the middle is a Sony digital recorder. And the device next to it is um, a LiveScribe pen. The LiveScribe pen, if you're not familiar, um, is a, a system, a little high tech, but it's composed of two pieces. The notebook, which is a special notebook because it's got um, dotted paper. And then there are controls on the bottom. The pen works like a regular pen, but it also has an electronic voice recorder built into it that when you pair the pen with the notebook, you can use that as a note-taking system in that I can record audio that's happening in the environment at that moment. And so what you see is if I'm taking notes in a meeting and maybe we've been there or you're, you're at an appointment and you're taking notes, um, perhaps you've been in this situation. You write notes on a piece of paper. 
If you're a handwriting note person, you write notes on a piece of paper, meeting ends, you fold that notebook up and then you look at it in two days. Two days come and you say, I have no idea why I wrote that note. I have no idea what I meant when I wrote that note. Um, maybe that happens to you. Happens to me a lot because I write poor notes. Uh, and so what happens is as you're writing the notes, if you push the record button that's on the page, it turns on the audio recorder. And so as you handwrite your notes, the pen is recording everything that's happening in the environment. Now, when you're done, you push the stop button that's on the pad, the pen stops recording. Now, anytime you go back to those handwritten notes, if you look at something you wrote and you're not sure why, if you tap the pen to your handwritten note, it will play you the audio of the moment in time that you wrote that. So think about this idea. It's basically giving you an indexed audio recording to your handwritten notes. Uh, and that is incredibly powerful uh, for people who take bad notes, uh, people who perhaps writing is difficult, um, but they can identify the important piece of something they're hearing. They could simply make a mark on a page. Um, and then you could use that to go back and listen to it. So a really powerful tool um, that allows you uh, to go back in time to when you write things. So Diane asks, I'm thinking, Diane, you're talking about the LiveScribe pen when you say, how do you try this? Um, these are tools we have in our lending center that people can borrow. Uh, so if that's something that you feel might be um, helpful for you, uh, we could set that up through a visit. I'm going to write it in the chat. And our, our lending center is at the Assistive Technology Center, which is Advancing Opportunities. Here comes the link in the chat. Um, and you can search on their website for the lending center and you could borrow that device, try it out. One thing that I will warn people about the LiveScribe pen, it's a great tool, but it is a two piece system. If you have only the pad and you don't have the pen, doesn't work. If you have the pen without the pad, doesn't work. So you need to have both. You need to make sure the pen is charged because the pen is electric. Um, so you have to do that. Um, and so that is a two-piece system there. What I find for some individuals that struggle with the idea of that tool is because it's two pieces they have to have with them. Now, an option might be a tool that does the same function but does it through an app. And so there is an app called Audio Note. Give me a second. Let me get out of this slide presentation and see if I can have a picture of Audio Note. I just knew this one had a lot of those pieces in it. Yeah, so here it is. So the Audio Note tool, in addition to the LiveScribe pen, the audio note is on the right-hand side of this slide. So the live scribe is on the top left. The audio note is on the right. That is an app. That audio note app works on every platform. It's an Apple product. It's an Android product. It will work on a Mac and a PC. So it'll work anywhere. The whole idea with that, it works the same way as the live scribe pen, but instead of handwriting, I type. So I hit record. It uses the microphone that's built into my device. And then it allows me to move through and type. And every time I type, it gives me a um, timestamp alongside the text um, that allows me to go back there and click. And then I can listen to it as I go. Um, and so thinking about that, that's a way to do it. You can also do it in Chrome. That's the piece on the bottom, which is similar to MicNote, but it's working. It's a web-based tool. So if you have a computer, you can do it in the browser as well. Uh, and so these are ways to do this kind of note-taking strategy um, or keep ourselves on track um, as we use this to support things. The, the app is called Audio Note, and it works everywhere. Um, it has a cost, and, and uh, I don't remember the cost, Robert, so I don't even want to say it because I don't want to set us up for less than it really is. Uh, I don't want to say it, but I'm not going to. Um, 
And the, the mic note, which is on the bottom left, is that web-based version, um, which is a monthly, a monthly subscription. I believe it's $10 for the month. And then you have access to that tool. But again, great options, great ways to approach note-taking and thinking about this creatively. Think about what it is you're writing notes about. So I, I was working with a, a young lady through vocational rehab uh, who was returning to school and work. So she was going to college and she was working. Uh, she had acquired a traumatic brain injury and was really struggling with, with steps of things and remembering things. Uh, we got her the live scribe pen and she took that everywhere with her. Um, and so it, when she went to work, she was a waitress uh, and she took the pen with her to work. And when people were giving her the order, she would record it so that she made sure she got the order right. Uh, and, and, you know, we had a conversation about maybe not recording people without telling them. So she would, she got a way that she would tell people she was doing this. And she sold it to them in such a great way. If I was in a restaurant and someone said this to me, I would never have a problem with it. She said, I use this tool to make sure I get your, your order accurate so it comes out the way you want it. And you know what? No one ever complained about that because we all want what we want. Um, and so that was really good. But then she also used that when she went to school. So for her college classes, she also used this as an independent uh, independence tool when she went to doctor's appointments and things like that, because she was a young adult, she didn't want to go with her mom to every appointment. She wanted to go by herself. And so when she met with the doctor, she would open up the live scribe pen and hit record. And as they were talking, she would write notes, but it would record all of their conversations so she could go back to it later. Uh, it's really, really a very, very cool product. Really great thing. So that's that example there. Um, it, great conversation in the chat. I'm watching it as it goes, and I feel like we're answering questions as we go. Yeah, Diane points out the doctor doesn't allow her to record the visit. That is that is a really um, a, a possibility of something that might happen. I think the live scribe or any of these tools that record, one of the first things we have to figure out is, will people allow themselves to be recorded? Um, and if not, we need to find another strategy for that. Um, I, I, I think one way you could approach the doctor and say, I am recording this so I can write down my notes later. I don't know if that's going to sway anybody as they go forward, but I think as long as you're pretty upfront with why you're doing it, um, sometimes you might have someone come with a little flexibility of like, okay, I get why you're using that. Um, but those are, those are conversations you have to have. You, you can't just start walking around recording people. Uh, you do have to give them a heads up. Melanie, I see you popping on and I see our time uh, as we're just having this conversation as we go. No, and, and right, this is exactly what we were hoping uh, these sessions to be. So that's perfect. I was actually hopping on. I did get a question emailed to me. It says, can you offer, can you offer some suggestions for task initiation or staying focused on tasks? Yeah. So staying focused on tasks and that idea of initiating something really interesting. Um, notifications are a great strategy for that. Notifications that remind us, oh, it's time to do something. Um, have you started? I've seen people that do multiple notifications about the same item. Uh, one of the um, interesting things um, that I've seen, and I'm trying to remember its name and it might come to me, um, so give me a minute, it might, it might flash in my brain, um, were tools that allowed you to record reminders. Uh, and so it could be someone's voice saying, don't forget to start this task. Um, and that Ada Reminder app that I showed you before allows that with reminders, you could put audio in there. And so it could be someone's voice. It is really interesting experience with a, with a, um, a young man who would not acknowledge the notifications when they popped up on his phone because it's just text. And if you just wait long enough, it'll just d drift away into the background. Uh, but what, what he, um, what we did for him was using that Ada reminder. We put the reminders with an audio cue of his family members reminding him of something. And just the familiarity with their voice caused him to look down and do what he needed to do. And so this idea of an audio prompt 
of somebody who perhaps will help facilitate the start of a process could be really powerful. I always um, think about when we talk about staying on task, um, I knew someone who it was almost a band that would offer a slight vibration um, that would sort of remind him to, to refocus, right? And tend to the task that he was hoping to complete for himself. Yeah, some of those kinds of vibration tools and things like that are really powerful because sometimes that's all it takes is just that little something to remind me that that things are happening. Uh, um, there is there's a little device called the Ditto, and it's the Ditto wearable, and it's about that big. It looks like a kidney bean almost, uh, and you sync it to your smartphone, and every time a notification goes off on your smartphone, it will send a different vibration to your wrist if you're wearing it. Uh, and that's exactly what that's for, Millie, that idea of, of giving people the subtle reminder that something's happening. Um, I was working with a young man who, if his, and he was in school at the time, if the bell rang for the class to let out before he realized it was about to um, end, he would get very upset and, and start to... Um, not be able to move forward because of the, of kind of this anxiety would st of stress of just getting done. And so what they did for him was they programmed this into his phone that it would send a vibration five minutes before the end of every class. And so when he felt that vibration, he would look at the clock, recognize the class was about to finish, and then he would start packing up his things. Yes, Kathleen, it's called the Ditto, the Ditto wearable. And it's about I know, I, I'm sorry I'm giving you these about costs. It's about $40. I know I bought it on sale. It was $30, but I didn't want to rub it in, but it's about $40. <laughs> and it syncs to your smartphone through an app. And it runs on a watch battery. It runs for at least six months, if not a year before you have to replace it. And so when we start thinking about things that need to be charged and that becoming an issue, this Ditto device just keeps running. It's also waterproof. So if you forget and it goes through the wash, it's not a big deal. And uh, Mike, if I could, um, I know that um, a couple of people have asked how to save the chat. Um, there's a ton of resources, right? And information being uh, saved in that area. So if you go to the chat section, the chat bubble on the bottom of your screen, um, in the area where you should have a message that says type message here, um, right to the right of that, if you go um, in that in that white square, in that white uh, rectangle, there should be three dots. If you click on those three dots, the three dots should be next to the smiley face. If you click on the three dots, it will say, say save chat. Yep. So um, if you're still having um, any uh, technical issues doing that, please reach out to me directly after the session and we'll see what we can do to get you um, that information. Again, if you type, if you click on the chat box where it has a type message here, if you look to the right above a little bit, it has three dots. If you click on those three dots, it'll give you an option to save chat. And I'm seeing people come through. And if you're on a phone, you might not get those three dots for the chat. And so if you reach out, wait a second, let me do this. Let me get us back to the our email addresses at the front. There you go. Um, if you reach out to one of us, we've saved the chat. So you could either reach back out to Melanie or you could reach out to Naomi or I. Um, we've saved the chat. We can simply email it to you. So you have it. It's a it's if you've never seen the chat from Zoom, it's a little tough to navigate through. Um because it comes kind of as one block of text almost. It is time stamped and that does help. Um, but just be prepared. It's not going to be very uh, structured and organized beyond just the timestamp. And Mike, so, one of the things that always comes to mind as I'm listening to you um, talk about all these tools and resources, again, are, are the watches, right? Yeah. The um, I saw someone earlier mention that they use an iPad, uh, not a phone. Um, and I'm not sure if the watches connect to the iPads. I'm sure you still probably have to be within a distance. But uh, to me, the watches offer so many more. I don't have one, but my daughter does. 
um, it just seems like it offers so many more um, portable options for people. It does. It's such a, it, the, the watch, any of the smartwatches, whether you have an Android device or an Apple, um, are such a nice extension of your device so that you don't have to worry about having your phone in your hand all the time. And this idea of things coming right to um, the watch face, whether it's those simple, the reminders, the vibrations to let you know something's happening uh, or the notification. So it can be really, a, a, can be a powerful addition to your smartphone for sure. Wonderful. Um, and then when also, we, and I'll, I'll let you uh, sort of wrap up, but um, we have a lot of people asking for a copy of the recording. We will make sure that that goes out through um, email within the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, that email may come from the Community Living Education Project. It may come from Melanie McGacken. It may come from CLEP. Um, but let's see. Um, I'll do my best to try to include the chat um, conversation in there. Also, I will include the PowerPoint and a copy of the recording of today's session. Awesome. So that should get everybody everything you had. And, and, and as always, the, the kind of the, the power of these sessions um, is in the sharing. So I really do appreciate uh, everybody sharing as they, as they did in the chat. That was awesome to hear how you're doing things um, and, and ways that you are finding supports for yourself and maybe those, those additional pieces you might need. So thank you for participating. Naomi, as always, thank you for managing the chat for us. That was wonderful. Um, and everybody else, I hope to see you next week. This would be uh, next week. Oh boy. You can see me next week, but I mean, next month is what I meant. Uh, when we do, uh, creating accessible materials is our next topic on the fourth. August 4th. That's no? Okay. I thought so. I remember that from before. Okay. The fourth. So there you go. And um, many people may have already registered for that. I know when we did registration for this session, we set it up so they can register for the select sessions or all the sessions at once. So if you didn't register, please uh, look for any follow-up emails. That's going to give you the option to do so. Um, additionally, before we hang up today, or as we're preparing to disconnect today, you're going to see a brief survey pop up on your screen. Um, taking that survey will um, take maybe 30 seconds, but it really allows us to plan for future sessions that are going to better address your needs. Um, and as always, Naomi and Mike, wonderful job, incredible information always shared. I have to say probably some of the most active chat uh, box sessions I have are with the two of you. And you're right, Mike, Naomi is absolutely a rock star with keeping up with that chat. And, yeah, she's uh, amazing, right? She's just like on responses. stuff. Yes. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so perfect. And you, um, you see Mike and Naomi's emails up there. Please um, reach out to them with any specific questions regarding today's um, resources, materials, anything like that, but also reach out for them um, if you have specific questions about the lending library or um, the new grant that Mike shared. So um, until August, uh, thank you again. And we look forward to our future sessions. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Have a you good well, rest everyone. of the day. Thanks again, Naomi. Thanks, Naomi.